<clears throat> okay, so in this third tutorial, um, we're going to look at extending the app that we made in tutorial two, so the form that allowed you to type in three items of information, it validated those things, and then uh, if this was successful, it took you to this page, uh, which displays this green success message. So now what we're going to have a look at is how can we store the data in the app, and uh, what we're going to try and do is retrieve it when we get to the success page so we can display the data that has been entered uh, so far. So this is not going to require any components yet so I'm going to go straight into blocks view. Okay, So rather than jumping straight to um, the, the new screen what I'm now going to put in is, and I'm going to do this as a procedure, Okay, so I'm going to say um, uh, so this is going to be my procedure that gets called and I'm going to put in uh, hold on a second I'm going to put in my call to the procedure here so if this succeeds then I'm going to call my procedure and this is add to database okay so what this does is if it hits this block it's going to jump this block uh, jump to this sequence of blocks once it's finished it's then going to continue to go to the next screen okay so what needs to happen when I add to my database well I do actually need one component here uh, so in the storage section is this thing called tinyDB if you drop that into the app and then I'm going to name it uh, just database will do and every screen that you use this on you will need to do the same thing so drop the tiny db element onto uh, the page in design view so now I have it here and I can access its blocks so there's several different methods um, one is store value, one is get value and one is get tags so um, the way uh, these databases work oops, is that they're just bear with me a second so for example, if I have a database called uh, names, and then each uh, item of data has a tag and a value. So what I might have in my database is name1, which is Bob, name2, which is Sally, name3, which is Fred, name4, which is Jeff, etc. So the name1, name2, name3, these are the tags and the values stored are the names, the strings. Um, what we're going to do actually is we're going to store um, each uh, item of data in uh, the database as a list. So uh, it's actually going to look more like this. So the value is going to be our item name, our picture URL, and our username. And the way this works is every time, uh, in fact we're going to use the item name as the tag as well and every time something is added to the database it's going to do the same thing so this may be different okay so that's the kind of introduction to how the database concept works and the thing we're going to need to do uh, at this stage is store okay so to store to the database I've just said the tag we're going to use is going to be the same as the item name so then we can get the item name input text field and just grab the text element from it. That's going to become the tag. This point now we need to add a list. So what we're going to use here is uh, we're going to make a list and that's what we're going to store in the database. So the list is going to be made up of those three things. The first thing being the item name and the next thing being uh, the picture URL and the third and final thing so because I've ran out of um, the slots for the, the list block here I just need to click the settings button and drag one more item and then I'm going to duplicate this and then lastly I just want the username input okay so what this does is once the form is validated it should jump to my add to database function and then what the add to database function does is it makes a list of the three bits of text from the input boxes and adds them to the database using the item's name as the tag. Okay, so to test that this works we now need to have a go at retrieving from the database. 
So back to the success screen. Okay. So in designer, I'm now going to add three uh, more labels to the page. So I am going to give this a name now. I'm going to call this success title. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some labels. Some more labels, rather. Um, I'm going to give them names. So item label. And a picture URL. In fact, rather than showing a label for that, we might as well have a go at displaying the picture. I think that would be an important thing to learn at this point. So I'm going to delete one of those labels. And this is going to become username, label. And now I'm going to look uh, for my drawing and animation side, uh, bit of the side panel. And I want to grab a canvas. And my canvas is going to be picture display going to call it. Okay. Uh, that's all we have to worry about for now, apart from the fact I'm just going to make it so that when the screen first shows up, just like we did before, these labels need to have no text. So the text uh, they display is going to be what's retrieved from the database. Okay. So now I'm going to go back actually. As I said before, every time you use the database, you need to have it on the screen. So I'm going to drag my tiny b a uh, tiny db element onto the page. Call it the same thing again, so database. Now when I go back to the block section, I should see it on the left hand side, and this time I don't want to store to the database, I'm now going to get something from the database. Okay, so what I'm going to take from my database element is this get tags thing, which returns a list representing all of the tags that are in the database. I'm only going to pick at this point one thing out of the list, so I'm going to use the first index, so I'm using this select, and it's just like an array or a list I'm going to take, apart from the first position is always going to be one, so I'm going to take the first thing out of the database and then that's going to give me our list um, of item name, picture URL and username. Okay. Um, from that I'm going to get out um, and I'm going to use this one so get value and my tag is going to be uh, the first tag in the list okay um, so now I'm going to make a list to store this so I'm actually going to create a variable at this point I'm going to make a local variable and I'm going to call it um, just data for now okay so data is going to be initialized to an empty list and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set, in fact data is going to be initialized, a better way to do it, is to the database call. So I'm going to get all of the things out of the database and put them straight in my list. Okay, what I then need to do is set my labels, so I've got my item label and I'm going to set the item label text to something from my list and I'm also going to get the username Okay, so I remember that I followed this format when writing to the database so item name, picture URL and username so now when I think about my list I can select something from the list again this time the list isn't going to be the database but I've created uh, my variable to store what was retrieved from the database called data Okay, so inside data, I now want to look for the first thing, which should be the item name, and also the third thing, which should, should be the username. And what this will do is it will change the labels to now display the information from the database. And the final thing I want to do is do the same with the picture. So I'm going to get picture display, but I'm looking for set back picture display background image. And this is where the second thing comes into play. Because that was a URL, I'm hoping I should now be able to display that. Okay, so it looks like this. So what we're doing here is uh, we've now changed it. So the success page has two labels and one canvas object. And what this does is it retrieves from the database whatever was the first thing in the database, retrieves the list of three items, and sets the label text and the picture background image to the data stored.
So hopefully now when we test this, this should work. So I'm going to go back to screen one. And now I'm going to go to screen two. Ooh, okay, so we've got a slight problem. Something is has gone into the database in the wrong order because it's actually not displaying my image and the image uh, seems to be going into the username label. Uh, so what we're going to have a look at is go back to screen one and let's see why that might have happened. So to debug the program, having a look at the blocks. Okay, so I think the problem... I encountered is that uh, it's still reading some data from the database from a previous project. So what I'm just going to make sure is that I clear the database when I press submit and then add the data. Obviously that's not ideal to wipe the entire database every time the person submits something, but for the purpose of this project um, I'm only wanting to store one uh, record of information anyway. Okay, so I'm having a look, and we're going to put the thing in again. So this time, the item name is cat, and the URL of the picture is this one. So http colon slash slash cats.org.uk uploads, whoops, uploads, images, pages, photo, uh, underscore latest 14.jpg. And the username, Mr. Paul, 2016. Okay, so hopefully now when I submit it, it should be able to display that information back to me. So, submission was successful. Okay, we got there. So what we've got now is the item name, the username in red, and then also the picture URL with the picture uh, displayed at the bottom in the canvas object. So that was how to write to a database using store value and how to read from a database by accessing the tags and using get value.